Hey gang, this week we're going to do a throwback to the wonderful land of Theros, and take an in-depth look at one of its resident gods. This is Thenax, God of Deception. Besides a kick-ass cape and a cool-looking mask, our three colorless, one blue and one black mana goes a pretty long way in getting us a four power, seven toughness, indestructible enchantment with the possibility of being a creature. But that's not all! Fenax, whether he's a creature or an enchantment, also gives every creature we control an activated ability which reads, Tap Target Creature. Target player puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard, where X is this creature's toughness. I like it. Now, I like to think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, that most Magic players follow a very similar cycle when first starting out. The game of Magic can be very overwhelming at first, but people tend to flock or be impressed by very thematic decks. To me, it seems like everyone I know at one point has either made a burn deck, a life gain deck, or a mill deck. This deck is going to harken back to the latter style. Mill decks are fairly straightforward by how they play out. Essentially, you deny your opponents the ability to draw reliably, and ultimately make them lose when their entire library is in their graveyard and they cannot draw. With that in mind, the way I see it, Fennec's ability leads us to two possible routes to victory, either by exiling what you mill, or by reanimating it. Now, don't take this statement as a one or the other type of situation. If anything, I'd say run a bit of both. Versatility and adaptability are king in EDH. When it comes to reanimation decks, there are chances are better commanders, so you at least want to have a few cards that can deal with it should you face them. Since most EDH decks have a few ways to utilize their graveyard to some extent, with a few exceptions here and there, we want to make sure that our ability to mill an opponent's library isn't actually fueling them towards victory. Selective or universal exile can help us make sure that our milling isn't pushing them too far ahead. Cards like Layla in the Void, Planar Void, and Nile Spellbomb are a great way to deal with these kind of decks. Plunk one of these down on the field and deny, or threaten to, any advantage they might gain over our decks. These spells are also great ways to deal with troublesome cards like the first wave of Eldrazi's, whose shuffle claws can severely hinder our chances of winning. We can also, assuming you aren't always playing against a heavy graveyard based decks, bring back some of your opponent's creatures. Animate Dead, Dance the Dead, and Reanimate are only just a few such cards that can pull creatures out of your opponent's graveyard and add them to your team. You can also run Rise of the Dark Realms, the king daddy of all those kinds of cards, to just steal everything from everyone's graveyard. So we've covered the two best routes to victory for Fenex, now let's look at some cards that'll help us get there. Eater of the Dead is the top card that I've seen associated with Fenex. For only 5 mana, we're casting what can sometimes work out to be essentially the second half of a 2 card combo. Milling for 4 might not seem like a lot, but its built-in untappability ability is a lot of potential targets. Assuming your opponents run a ton of creatures, we can easily mill half of their decks with just this one guy. He's hard to find due to his being printed in the Dark expansion, but he's well worth the effort to find. Altar of the Brood might only mill one card per permanent per opponent, but it requires zero investment beyond its initial cost. Seemingly unthreatening, with no upkeep, and a constant effect that adds up over time is exactly the kind of artifact we want to spend 1 mana on. In a similar vein, Sphinx's Tutelage is another great pay once and let it do its thing type card. For a small investment, we get what I'd compare to a grindstone-like effect with potential upside. Admittedly, the cost to activate it can be a bit more expensive than grindstone, but the trade-off is that we get to do it as many times as we can draw, plus we get one free trigger for each of our draw steps. Normally, I'm not a fan of creatures whose powers and toughness are dependent on resources that our opponents control, especially when we're trying to actively exile or use those resources, but I'm pretty sure you'd all attack me if I didn't at least mention Consuming Aberration. 5 mana to give all of our spells a mill trigger is fantastic, and he can potentially be a huge tapper of Thenex on the field. His downside is that he can be difficult to use if you've dropped early graveyard hate. Your mileage will vary with this card. Similar cards like White of Precinct 6 can get massive as well, and are great to tap when Fenex is out. They're cute for the first few games, but I'd suggest running creatures that don't just get chump blocked all day, or do nothing without Fenex on the field. The most miltastic card, and yes, I did say miltastic, deal with it, for any deck has to be Mesmeric Orb. This artifact will make it so that we don't even have to cast spells to mill our opponents, they'll do it themselves by attacking and casting spells. A punishing card for certain, but one that needs to be used carefully, lest you find yourself without a library as well. The original Drassi can give us a bit of a hard time, so like they say, if you can't beat them, join them. For Fenex, beyond running either the original Ulamog or Kozlik to prevent ourselves from milling out, we should probably be looking at some of the new additions from Battle for Zendikar or Oath of the Gatewatch. The first Eldrazi I'd consider is Endbringer. For a small investment, one of which has to be colorless, we get a 5 power and 5 toughness creature. Pinging, drawing, forcing attacks, Endbringer does it all, but the main reason we'll be using him, however, is his untap clause. Coupled with Fenex, we can tap Endbringer to mill our opponents for anywhere between 5 to 15 cards before our next untap. The second new addition to the Eldrazi I'd recommend in running is Sire of Stagnation. Functioning as a budget replacement for Consecrated Sphinx, Sire has the added benefit of exiling opponents who are ramping heavily while generating us a few cards. His power is decent, but he's a big ol' booty which is exactly what Fenex is looking for. 
Counter spells are regrettably a necessary evil in a blue and black EDH deck. Normally I try to avoid running too many counter spells, but for this deck they'll act more as removal. If I had to bite the bullet, I would suggest running Hinder and Spell Crumble. Now, gone are the days when we could tuck a general, but the impact of these two counter spells is not lost. In fact, their value goes up significantly if you're running a card like Tunnel Vision, since they allow us to know exactly what's on the bottom of an opponent's library. Milling up to potentially 99 cards for only 6 mana is good. Or so I'm told. Some of the cards I would recommend avoiding are generic, large toughness creatures whose sole purpose is to tap with Fenax. EDH has a diverse and large card pool, and a library with 99 cards can seem like it can afford to run a few vanilla creatures, but you'll almost never want to draw these late in the game. Avoid generic walls unless they do something like Mnemonic Wall, which can return a valuable mill spell or a counter spell or a draw spell or whatever you need. Running something like Sewer Nemesis, which has a mill trigger in response to an opponent's casting, over a basic creature like Mortivore who can only regenerate, will always have better results. Ideally, all of the cards in your deck need to be good enough to stand on their own should casting Fenex never be an option. Well gang, that's my take on Fenex, God of Deception. Mill decks are traditionally not the strongest in EDH, due to their spells offering only small increments or one-time use. But with Fenex at the helm, we can transform our creatures into free, reusable milling machines. So again, as always, thank you guys for watching, and be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more.